I'll show you what true commentating really is. Blah, blah, heavy music. You're trying to make up for your small dick, despite the fact that it doesn't change that you're a pathetic, puny, whiny little bitch who can't come to terms with how completely pathetic you are. Hello, YouTube. This is Joshua E. Ford, 2 a speaking. All right, you... Yes, Joshua, we know you're here to suck the dick that Danny does not have, hoping that somehow her popularity might rub off onto you. And also, I'm going to be skipping the rest of his introduction here. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and fast forward the parts where we got the retrospective and just get to Joshua's point. So we're not here all day long. How about that? I'm sure you guys would appreciate that, right? <laughs> The next hop on our hero's journey is Death Mountain, and they will continue to use the river's currents in order to ride their fast. As they ride, Vio notices that they're traveling downstream away from the mountain. Whoopsie! Because that line was TOTALLY needed, wasn't it? No, 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 really, guys! I think that whoopsie is quite possibly the greatest point to ever be stated in the commentary by anyone in the history of commentaries. Really, my life is now changed forever. I think I can go kill myself happily now. Blue takes his frustration out on red, and when Green stands up for him, this prompts yet another fight with Blue. This time, they are so close to their argument, they realize a black wind crashing into the water, making a rapid departure. Blue tries to guide himself safely down the river, but Blue and Green continue to fight. This causes them to crash into a rock, and then the black wind carries them in different directions. You know, I'm starting to dislike Blue's reputation. I mean, why does he always have to be so bashful? All his bashful meanings are just getting no nowhere and getting them to nothing but trouble. Ugh. Yeah, allow me to use the phrase bashful, despite how that word does not fit into the situation or make any sense in context with the events that are happening. Because, you know, it does nothing more than to prove how incompetent I am. Green finds himself in the middle of a desert village inhabited by the Gerudo, and he's approached by one of the women. She takes him into a tent and offers to give him a massage, telling him to let all of his worries go and just relax. Green succumbs easily, forgetting all about his quest and his companions. Man, Lay's pretty persuasive. Oh, I wish Eliana would do the same for me. Oh, Eliana. Um, oh, I just want to chew on your back. Mm, oh, Eliana, why don't you use your body to persuade me? Mm, mm, mm. And Ariana, I'm sorry. I had to pull that pop shot out on him. I'm sorry. Blue is taken to a barren, frozen land. His first thoughts are that the shock from the river had snapped the links back into one, leaving him as the original personality. More. That was all you had to say? Were you looking in the mirror when you were recording this or something? Because that is the only possible explanation I can come up with for such a dumb fucking remark. The villagers corner them and call them both thieves, and Red tries to negotiate with them so that they can listen to the kid's side of the story. But the child is gone, and so is Red's four sword. That was pretty sneaky, and I can't believe Red fell for that. Yeah, because obviously you are the judge when it comes to higher planes of intelligence. I have a feeling that if the same thing happened to you, it would probably leave you naked in a ditch, drowning in your own blood and excrement. That was dark, and I don't apologize in the least bit for that. The villagers chase him away, and he manages to run into the kid again. When Red demands his sword to be returned, the kid says that Red never had it when he ran into him. But as a thank you for helping him, he gives Red a fire rod. Red accidentally uses the rod, which catches the villagers' attention, and he's labeled as the arsonist. And Red goes on the run once more, calling for Blue, Green, and Vio's help. Okay, this part leaves me with utter confusion. But whatever. How the hell did this leave you confused? He is blind because the village was burned down and the villagers saw him summon a 
spew of fire from a rod. That is perfectly and completely logical, you freaking moron! The others don't want to think at all. Just fight. So tell me everything. I want to hear it all. We're so similar, you and I. You know, we are a lot like you and I. We share the same looks, share the same powers, share the same goal, etc. We should hang out more often. There is one thing we would like to know. Tell us what you think about this. <laughs> Okay, hold on, let me break down this last part real quick, because I've really been lazy on these whole Dark Shadvik or whatever the hell this thing is called. First, this and this look nothing alike, so how are you exactly the same? Plus, you have the powers of, hell, I don't know, what are your powers? Whatever they are, they're probably stupid and cliched anyway, and he has no special powers at all. Next, he wants to save Zelda. And all you want to do is ruin Denny's retrospective, so how are your goals the same? And lastly, what in the name of flying magical ninja midgets on pogo sticks from outer space does the cross, and I would assume God, have to do with this retrospective at all? Are you trying to attract the Christian community or something now? Back at the Gerudo village, Green gazes at Zelda's pendant, which snaps him out of his stupor. He races out of the tent, past the guards, and into a raging sandstorm. The village elder notes that Green is headed towards the ancient pyramid, which will either invite him in, or completely destroy him. Let's just hope he, it does invite him in. Sadly, I hope it destroys him. Because that would make it so you wouldn't have any more retrospectives to ruin. Only then will they know if he will follow the same path as one of their own, Ganondorf. You know... Just hearing that name makes me want to smite evil. In Shavik's case, that is. Since when did Ganon have anything to do with Shavik the Hedgehog and his crappy little universe? With shit like Kitty Bat Hogs, which according to some people I've asked about, namely this person, they say this cannot exist in the recolored universes. How about you keep your grubby little hands off the Zelda characters before you go around and gay up the series? Okay, thanks, bye. Sexual. Okay, guys, I'm going to end this one here, seeing as everything after this is nothing more than Danny finishing her video and the dumbass saying, Queep up the good work, Danny. So yeah, I will see you guys shortly because I'm already working on part five.